on this stage, I said that the story of the Red Sea Project began with a turtle. I said we would transform a stunning area of the Saudi Arabian coast into a luxury tourism destination. فقبل تحقق اي شيء تحتاج تبني الفريق لكن احنا نطمح للافضل. أمام لأي فرصة سوف نعمل عليها سواء كانت عشر فرص أو مئة فرصة أو ألف فرصة أو خمسة آلاف فرصة لنطور قدراتنا البشرية. And why the Red Sea is leading the way. Please welcome Mr. John Pagano, Group CEO, the Red Sea Development Company, and Amala. Good afternoon, everybody. It's so great to be back on stage here at the Future Investment Initiative. I do hope you enjoyed our video. It's a bit of a teaser of what's to come. But two years ago, I'll remind you, I stood on this stage and I told you about our plan for the west coast of Saudi Arabia. I painted a picture of a new luxury tourism development on a site the size of Belgium. Fifty new hotels amid a landscape of sweeping desert dunes, dramatic mountains and dormant volcanoes, and of course, beautiful, pristine blue waters. At the crossroads of Europe, Africa, and Asia, all less than eight hours from 80% of the world's population. I described how we were doing things differently and leading the way. Generating energy entirely from the sun. And not just protecting the environment, but actually enhancing it creating a tourist industry in a country that has previously only been known for religious tourism. Now, we were just starting out on the ground with the Red Sea Project, and then the world stopped. I don't think any of us will ever forget the early days of the pandemic, and not only the threat to normal life, the wards full of patients, the daily death tolls, but also the threat to so-called normal life. Workplaces shut down. Planes grounded. Holidaymakers stranded. And industries like tourism at a standstill. At the Red Sea, we were lucky. The site is remote. We were able to seal it off and just carry on with our work. Though that wasn't easy. But we knew that when the world started turning again, we needed to be ready. And we will be ready. I said here that we would be opening our doors to guests in 2022. And at the end of next year, we will be doing exactly that. The pandemic hasn't thrown us off course. But it has forced people to take stock 
to consider the things that really matter, to realize that it is when we invest in humanity that we see the greatest returns. When movement was curtailed, it made us appreciate the ability to travel, explore, and seek new and unique experiences. When jobs were in peril, it underlined the importance of decent, skilled, and reliable work. When cars stayed in garages and flight paths fell silent and emissions duly fell, air quality improved and wildlife returned to places it hadn't been seen for years. It made us wonder if mankind treads more lightly on this earth, can we better coexist with nature and protect our planet? What we're doing at the Red Sea Project answers those yearnings. And even before the pandemic, I made many promises. I said that we will set new standards that others will follow. And I can tell you today, we do what we say, and we are leading the way. I said we would create thousands of new jobs. We have. The last time I spoke here, there were 50 people on site. Today, there are more than 10,000, many of which come from our local communities. Our little base camp has been replaced by a construction worker's village. And it's not what you'd imagine. It's decent accommodation with privacy, with ensuite bathrooms, gyms, sports fields, cinemas, a medical center, and of course, destination-wide Wi-Fi. Now, it will be complemented by the coastal village, where our new offices and management hotel are already operational for the 14,000 people who will live and work at our destination. And on staff welfare, we're also leading the way. And not just because we believe in human dignity and in the individual worth of each and every worker, but because when you aim for minimum standards, you get minimum output. Our guests have the highest expectations too. They want comfort, but not at the discomfort of those who are making their trip possible. We're honoring that. And by creating what is essentially a new industry in this country, we're also generating opportunity. Opportunity for the men and women of Saudi Arabia. We're employing the best. And they're making sure that we deliver the best. Not telling us what we want to hear, but actually holding us to account. And not only are we employing Saudis, we're investing in their futures by providing them with the skills and experience for employment opportunities in the new Saudi tourism industry. In 2019, we sponsored 120 young Saudis to study at the University of Prince Megrin for a degree in international hospitality management, which was accredited by the prestigious Ecole Hotelier de Lausanne. In fact, many of those ambitious students are here with us today as they gain valuable work experience serving us all here at the Ritz-Carlton. We're also in our second year of delivering our elite graduate program, which brings bright Saudis uh, graduates into our business to learn on the job, along some of, some of the very best global leaders in their fields, including areas like environmental sciences and sustainability. And we're also supporting our local communities by creating new employment and business opportunities. For example, around 2,000 people are now working for us and our contractors to help us deliver the uh, project. And for that, and that for us, is the most important thing. Everyone has known for a long time that we can't go on treating our planet as we have been. Sustainability is no longer a nice to have. It's an absolute necessity. And on that, the Red Sea is definitely leading the way. Now, I'll tell you what true sustainability looks like. It's what I saw when I visited the Red Sea last week. A place where not one iota of garbage is going to landfill. Nothing washed into the sea. A place where there are now 80 kilometers of new roads to better connect a destination 
but will be for, for electric and hydrogen vehicles only. And our 1 million square meter landscape nursery is growing 25 million plants to green the destination as we realize synergies along the Red Sea coast. Anything that we can recycle is recycled on site. Anything that we can compost goes into the landscaping effort. Anything left over becomes ash and gets turned into fill. By the time our first guests arrive, we will have the largest battery storage system in the world. We're piloting new technologies to find new solutions, like turning sunlight into seafood with Blue Planet ecosystems. And thanks to our partnership with a company called Source, we're offering bottled water made purely from sunlight and air, served in glass bottles, I hasten to add. Now, that's what excites me. Not that we're creating the world's largest uh, tourism developments, but that we're creating the world's biggest sustainable tourism development. I've spent my entire career building things, obsessing over how form and function can meet effectively. But when I go to the Red Sea, I see that perfe perfection is already there in nature. In the metropolises of mangroves, cathedrals of coral, our skyscraping mountains, and perfectly proportioned houses. Of course, I'm referring to the shell of the Hawksbill sea turtle. This is the little guy who lives on one of our most beautiful islands. And he's the reason that we're leaving 75% of our islands untouched. We know that we serve nature best not just by protecting it, but by enhancing it. And that is what I mean when I talk about regenerative tourism. For me, sustainability is simply about not making a mess of the place. Regeneration, on the other hand, is about going further. It's about leaving the place better than when we arrived. It's what I'm most passionate about. And it's where I truly believe that we're leading the way. We're aiming for a 30% net conservation benefit over the next two decades across our entire project area, including Amala. What that means is those beautiful mangroves and coral reefs will be more plentiful in the years to come, enabling biodiversity to flourish. Indeed, right now, we're working with the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology to grow coral in a laboratory to be put back into the sea. It also means that, thanks to our turtle tagging program, those critically endangered hawksbill sea turtles will be more populous too. Now, I'm not saying that we have the answers to every environmental problem. But where there are currently no solutions, we're searching for them. And we'll continue to do so. People will be flying into our new international airport. Now, I know that's far from ideal but we're finding ways to sequester the carbon from each and every flight. As a starting point, the airport will be powered by 100% renewable energy. Our entire destination will remain off-grid. In the process, we will be saving 500,000 tons of carbon dioxide that would otherwise be emitted into the atmosphere each year. And when we add Amala, that'll double that figure to 1 million tons. For now, we'll be using sustainable aviation fuels. But we're also looking at flying hydrogen-powered seaplanes to access our islands as early as next year. Because we're not just a travel destination, but an, but an incubator of ideas, a center of learning. We're leading the way. And so many people want to join us. Now, we're lucky that we have the backing of the Public Investment Fund right from the very beginning but we're getting more and more private sector backers, too. We've awarded more than 800 contracts to top companies who want to work with us to deliver our vision, worth in excess of 20 billion rials. And our utilities public-private partnership, awarded to a consortium led by Aquapower, brought with it foreign direct investment, too. We secured the first Saudi rial-denominated green finance loan earlier this year for a total of 14.12 billion rials. 
We're even the first development in the Middle East to be certified as lead platinum for cities. So that's where we are since I last spoke to you on this stage two years ago. Thank you. Our plans have been put into practice, commitments made concrete, ambitions actualized, teamwork and collaboration exercised. And that vigor has been accelerated by a renewed sense of what really matters in this world. We all owe such a debt to those who have guided us through the pandemic. The nurses and doctors, the vaccine creators, the key workers who soldiered on. The last two years has shown us the very best of humanity. And it has made many of us realize the need to invest in humanity. Delivering the jobs people need, offering the experiences travelers crave, preserving the most precious resource that we have, without which we would not exist. So I invite you to come and see how we're playing our part in that. We are leading the way. And I invite you to follow us on our incredible Red Sea journey. Thank you.